This is the Carvera Air. It is a semi-professional desktop CNC machine that allows even the most inexperienced of hobbyists to produce amazing custom components from the comfort of their workshop. It comes with a whole bunch of useful and easy to use features that combined with the proprietary controller and CAM software make machining effortless and easy. I will not border you too much with the specs uh, since uh, there are plenty of other videos uh, covering them and I think there is no better way to review it than to make some complex uh, custom parts uh, to showcase uh, its capabilities. The first project will be a ball in a box uh, keychain which will nicely test everything from dimensional accuracy, repeatability, precision surface finish and general ease of use. You obviously don't need to start with something uh, this complex uh, since the machine comes uh, with a set of amazing starter projects uh, that will allow you to gather the basic knowledge necessary to operate the Carvera and use it for your own creations. I've built this acrylic lamp uh, and I have to say that the process uh, truly allowed me to understand what are the steps uh, involved in machining something with the Carvera from a work holding to probing and starting the job, nicely showcasing its capabilities in PCB making, engraving and metal and plastic machining. Everything you will ever need to know is also well documented in the amazing instruction books or even over on the Makera website. Moving on with the keychain project, the first thing we need to machine is actually a set of clamps to prevent the ball from moving on the last machining operation, when it will get detached from the box. For that I used the included 2cm thick ABS block and generated the G-code using the Makera CAM software, which was extremely easy to use. After importing the 3D model from Fusion and setting the stock size, I've generated the needed toolpath and exported them as a single file. After connecting my tablet to the machine via Wi-Fi, the files can be uploaded and the job started. The machine will first uh, ask you to insert the probing tool, after which uh, it will automatically proceed to zeroing the z-axis, scanning the margin of the machining operations and leveling the surface. After this process it will ask you to insert the first tool and will move on by zeroing its height, with the tool probe located in the right corner, after which it will start the job. The first pass is a clearing pass to remove most of the material using a flat end mill. When it's time to change the tool, the machine will automatically stop and ask you to insert the second tool. It then proceeds to zero its height and start the second operation, which is a finishing path to nicely smooth out the surface. Lastly, a third operation cuts the contour to complete the part. After machining the second one, we can start working on the actual keychain. For that, the fourth axis needs to be installed using six screws and two dowel pins to ensure precise alignment. To zero the z-axis, I've clamped this 5mm aluminum plate in the chuck, rotated it 45 degrees and probed its top surface, offsetting the results by 2.5mm to precisely get the z-origin in line with the rotation axis. To align the y-axis, I've measured the position of these two surfaces using a piece of paper and found the center by averaging the two measurements. The X origin position is arbitrary, so I set it to ensure that the bit clears the chuck when machining. As you can see, this setup procedure was made quite easy and if done correctly guarantees exceptional accuracy. Inserting the material, we can start machining. The first operation will be an adaptive clearing pass to remove most of the material, followed by a finishing pass to get the top surface to the final dimension. The third pass gets the internal opening to the final dimensions using a 2mm flat end mill, after which the same end mill clears most of the material around the sphere, leaving about 0.05mm extra that can be then removed on the next pass with a 30 degrees V-bit to bring the sphere to a nice finish. With this first job completed, we can manually rotate the part 19 degrees using the Carvera controller up and repeat every operation, doing this for all four faces. Once that is done, the part can be cut free from the chuck, leaving a tiny tab that we can break off by hand. 
With the four faces of the cube completed, the four faxes can be now removed and the L bracket installed in the corner. Using the XYZ probe, I located the edge of the cube and used it as the origin for repeating the same operations on the fifth face. At this point we need to insert the clamps we machined earlier to keep the ball from moving during machining, allowing us to nicely machine the last phase, freeing the ball from the cube. As you can see the result turned out amazing, especially after a quick hand polishing to bring the surface nearly to a mirror finish. Accuracy and repeatability in the machining process proved to be amazing. The various operations in fact came together perfectly without the slightest of misalignment between them. Dimensional accuracy is amazing down to a level that I honestly don't trust my chip caliper with even the ball being just 100 of a millimeter off dimension. The only imperfection was actually caused by me since I've set the origin wrong in one of the operations and the bit crashed straight into the ball, but we please don't talk about that. Generating the G-code was actually extremely easy using Fusion 360 and the Makera presets available for each tool and for a bunch of different materials. I've just used the aluminum preset and it worked out amazingly without taking too much time. With the mechanical capabilities tested, I wanted to machine something more creative. So I've engraved a 3D relief of my logo on one of the included resin sheets, and also this beautiful dragon on a piece of hardwood. For both, I've used the Makera Cam, with the whole G-code being generated in just a couple of minutes, guaranteeing amazing results as you can see. Each job started with a roughing pass to flatten the surface and remove most of the material, after which a second finishing pass took place to complete the engraving. I've also machined this wooden statue of Deadpool using the four faxes, subdividing the process in four different operations, each one offset by 90 degrees from the other, to guarantee the best details and to allow me to reach every overhang. The code was this time generated using Fusion 360, with again a roughing pass followed by a finishing one. I've used Fusion 360 since dividing the job in multiple different angles allowed the making of complex overhangs, while on the Makera Cam the G-code generation doesn't allow the bit to get offset from the rotation axis, making the machining of overhangs like this sword impossible since the sword itself will block access to the part below it that needs machining as well. This could be solved by using a true 4-axis machining cam software that allows simultaneous use of all 4 axes, but they are extremely expensive and I'm honestly not willing to spend 2500 euros on one just to test the true 4-axis machining. One last thing that I want to test is the laser module, which uh, even though it uh, features just uh, 0.5 watts of power, it is perfect for such a machine, because uh, its job is to just engrave and not cut anything, since the end mill will take care of that in a second operation. Engraving my logo on a piece of hardwood turned out as expected, and again using the Makera cam software made the process extremely easy with all the settings already set to guarantee the best results possible. So, is this machine worth the 2200 euro price tag? I absolutely think so. Not because it's the most powerful or the fastest, but because it's the first machine that I've ever used that makes machining actually enjoyable. The semi-automatic tool changer, amazing software and infinite presets available remove any type of hassle related to machining guaranteeing also amazing precision and opening a door to a whole new range of projects and prototyping abilities. This is of use and the constant high quality of the results you're able to get makes you really feel like there are no limits to what you can build, ultimately increasing creativity, productivity and quality of projects. If you want to purchase the Carvera Air, you can find a link to it in the description below. I will see you in the next one!